United manager, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Ole, what did you make of the result and your team's performance? Of course, I mean, you're never happy when you lose a game. Uh, first goal, disappointing to concede a goal from a set piece. We don't deal with that well enough. Then I thought we weathered the storm really well, beginning of the second half and the last half an hour. I thought we were excellent. Pegged them back, back pressed them, had majority of possession second half, pushed them back and created chances, big chances, and we created the pressure. I thought they looked nervy, but then of course we we send everyone up for uh, to get that uh, equaliser, and then uh, they get that goal. Were there times in the game where you were hanging on? Yeah, beginning of second half, especially the first ten minutes. There, we were <laughs> we weathered the storm really well, though. Uh, David, fantastic performance today. Um, but after them ten minutes, I thought we uh, we took the game to them, and we created chances, big chances. And we created a pressure on them. How concerned were you that that second goal, at the times it was, was going to be given? No, nah, it couldn't be given. Absolutely. If you, if you need VAR to do that, then you don't handle the situation as well as you should have on a big uh, game, a stadium like this. So, clear foul. I wasn't really concerned. You gave it your best shot, but 30 points between you and Liverpool now. What's that say about where the two clubs are right now? Well, I think they've... They've stamped their authority on the game and uh, leading, leading the league deservedly. They're, they're playing they're the most direct team in the league. They do put teams under pressure, play them long balls, second balls, it's corners. They, they put everything at you and it's, you've got to concentrate at the back. Uh, it's not like they carve you open. They really play through us. I think today was a miles better performance than um, say a year ago here. When we spoke to you before the game and asked you about Marcus Rashford, you said, don't expect to see him before the international break. That's nine weeks away. Is it a stress fracture? In I didn't say international break, did I? <laughs> He's uh, suffered a bad injury, yeah. He's, uh... is it, sorry, Ollie, is it, I need to be clear. Is it a stress fracture, a double stress fracture, his back? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a stress fracture that it happened against Wolverhampton. And, uh, and it's not something that uh, uh, has happened before. Is that is that the one uh, there and then so un unlucky for uh, Marcus he'll be out for a while for us yeah is it more likely to be months than weeks <laughs> yeah they'll he, he won't be back until after the mid -se mid season break I don't know how long it is I'm not the doctor but normally stress fracture is six weeks to to heal uh, and then he needs some recovery after that or rehab after that probably what does that do, his injury right now, in terms of your policy in this window? Does it intensify your search? Does it change anything? Well, we've had many, many injuries on big players for us this season. We've had uh, now Marcus, Anthony's been out for months, Paul's been out for uh, half or more than half the season, Scott's been out for months. So it's just an unfortunate situation we're in. Um, it might be because of the window is open. We might look at some short-term uh, deals as well. And uh, that could take us through the, uh, until the summer. Do you think you desperately need to get a striker in right now, though? <laughs> desperately? No, not desperately. Of course, we've, uh, we're looking at numbers as well, because we, we have had many injuries. So uh, if the right one's there and it'll fit, fit for us, we can buy. If there's loans available, it might be possible. But uh, I've got players here as well that uh, are chomping at the bit. Thanks, Oli. Cheers. We'll talk about Marcus Rashford in just a moment and his injury. But, Robbie, if they'd won this game, I know it's a big if, but if they had beaten Liverpool, they'd only have been two points of fourth. And mm. fourth for Manchester United this season would be great success. Yeah. It's not all doom and gloom. It's not all doom and gloom. And the manager's right there. There were some good moments. And when you look at the lineups, I look at Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Brandon Williams, Dan James, even Andreas Pereira... You know, young players, that this is an incredible ask when lots of your key players are out injured. You're playing against the European champions, the runaway leaders of the Premier League. And to get quite close uh, and with better finishing, they could have got something out of the game. I thought it was a, it was a good performance of Manchester United. Moments, of course, I got outrun, but they had some opportunities. Yeah, you make a good point about the finishing, Robin. And they did. They were competitive uh, throughout the game. Pereira here, if he gets a good contact, brings Manchester United level just before half. Into the second half, Fred Blake from mid midfield. And no goal scoring's not 
the top of, of his agenda, but, you know, hits the target meter. This one, Rob, I think we both feel mm. was the chance of it. That's Marcus Rashford in the form he's in. I think he scores in there. Well, you nicely lead me on there, Robbie Earl, to this graphic. Marcus Rashford in the form he's in. 14 goals this season, which is almost double what the next best Anthony Martial has. But as we heard, Rashford is out. It's a little complicated, a bit of a grey area as to how long. Henry Winter from the Times is reporting two to three months out. Solskjaer there said the mid-season break, which is mid-February, that would only be three weeks. So, not sure. Either yeah. way, yeah. that is a huge blow. It's a massive blow to the football club and to Marcus Rashford, the form he's in, Rebecca. 14 Premier League goals, the most goals he's ever got in, in, in the Premier League and, and flying at the moment. It's almost like taking Roberto Firmino out of Liverpool's team, the best player, the, the key player, and saying, you know, go on with the rest of the season. It's a massive blow for Manchester United. And they might have to go into the transfer market. It might force them into bringing somebody in. Even if it's a, it's a loan between now and the end of the season, they've still got a chance at top four. You think about recent attacking players for United and, and the players that have left. Alexis has gone. Romelu Lukaku has gone. Paul Pogba is out of the picture right now. In terms of attacking quality on this team over the last season or so, it really has dwindled. So to get an injury to, to, to Rashford is a disaster, really. And then Martial. Keep going back to Martial. You know, he... he if he's not the guy mm. to be, have the personality to lead this front line in the absence of others, then they have got to get somebody. Now, it's difficult, we know, in January. There's just left over the last season or so. It's got to be a priority for Man United. He is still young, but he's the most experienced of yeah. the yeah. young front yeah. three, isn't he, Anthony mm. Martial? I've been there certainly a while, four and a half years at Manchester United. Stay where you are after the break. You're going to want to see this. Virgil van Dijk breaks down his goal with former Liverpool centre-half Jamie Carragher. That's coming next here on Premier League Goal Zone. The Premier 